Yeah, now historically, green-white is a great answer to mono-red. Um, we'll see just if that's the case here. Looking at Ryan's deck, there could be some problems for Jasper. So Seeker of the Way and Hidden Dragon Slayer are both in the main. That's some life, a lot of lifelink there. He also has four, four copies of Fleece Main Lion. Um, this is going to be a tough matchup for Jasper. Low end green white is is historically great against red, and this is no, this is no different. Azurga Bell Striker is where Jasper does start. For sorry, he's got a warden of the first tree as we're underway here in round number five from Milwaukee. Mana Confluence in the two color deck. We call that the Boswell Special. <laughs> yeah, full four of them as well. That's no surprise. Those green white decks they don't have great mana. Sorry, we'll take one after dealing one over to Jasper. And now here's a Den Protector face up. Well, he knows his matchup at the very least. He's willing to play Den Protector, pay one mana or end one life to take play Den Protector as a Goblin Piker. Remember, Warden does represent a late game threat in the deck. If it does get lifelink, it's a huge problem for Jasper. He has plenty of ways to kill it, but he still has to make sure that he does that. Here comes Zergo. There's a block. Those two creatures will trade. The follow up here for Jasper is an Eidolon. He'll pass the turn back. A risky idol in here because Jasper's not actually ahead on the board. If things stay the way they currently are, we could just see Warren on the first return to a 3-3. Three, three. Turn to a 3-3 three, three this turn and a 3-3 three, three lifelink next turn. Yep. Here comes the Warden right now. Jasper, I can't imagine him blocking, and he's not. So one damage appears to come across. How sorry we'll tie things up after cracking that fetch land. Both players at 18 right now. A lot of incidental damage there, though. One off the fetch land, one off the mana confluence, and two more off the spell he's going to play. It's a four damage he'll, he'll have taken. And Jasper hasn't even come across in the red zone to hit him yet. Exactly. I guess the question is, what's the spell? Is it worth the two damage? We'll find out here in just a moment. Yeah. The card Jasper had to have been worried about was something like Dromoka's Command. Well, Deathfish Raptor's the play. That's fine. There's so plenty of spells that can kill a Deathmiss Raptor. Yeah, red decks are surprisingly very good against Deathmiss Raptor. They're good against a 3-3. It's a 3-3. That's not a very efficient magic card. See so things like Lightning Strike in his hand. Looks like Jasper does have a copy of Chandra today. Yep, one in the main deck. Could see him deploy that this turn. I know that Stephen Neal was playing that card to the Pro Tour as well. He's in attendance this weekend. Looks like he's going to play that. He'll have to take two to cast it. Very interesting card in Chandra. Looks like Ryan wants to take a look, and we can do the same. It's very, very powerful if it flips. Yes, her, her backside, the backside is great, but she has to have dealt three or more damage this in one turn to flip her. Now, keep in mind, you can do that damage through attacking. Yes. And you don't, it doesn't say deal damage to a player. It just says deal three or more damage this turn. So if I attack and, like, your Sylvan carry added, and you block, all right, that's two. And I play a red spell, untap. We're Ping good. you. Yep, we're, we're good to flip. So it's it's not as difficult as it may seem. You know, and I, I remember initially people were like, I have to play three red spells to flip this thing, or, you know, two red spells, or I have to attack and then play a spell and get through. It, it's actually not that hard. Here come two creatures, Deathness Raptor and Warden of the First Tree. See if Jasper has an interest in a block here. So Ryan choosing to race against this strategy is ambitious, especially against Achandra. I had a feeling you might see this, the double block. Now, this could end poorly for Jasper. Yeah, I mean, a card like Dromoka's Command would wreck him here. Yeah. Now, the question is, is there anything he can do about Dromoka's Command in the first place? Maybe yes, maybe no. Here comes the pump. This is pretty good. Jasper traded a creature and for Ryan's Warden and Ryan's turn. Yep. Ryan's going to follow up with a temple. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I like that trade on Ryan's side. I mean, that may have been a situation where he didn't think that Jasper was going to double block. Right. That may have caught him by surprise a little bit. Now we're going to pass the turn back over to Jasper. There is Abbott in grip. He might want to start there. That's exactly where he will start. off to take two to cast it. Top card is a lightning strike. I don't believe he has a land. No, oh, he, he does. does. Okay. Excellent. He will take two to cast that as well, but now Deathmiss Raptor's off the battlefield. Gets to come across here for two. Not afraid to play cheap spells on the battlefield. No. no, you're the red deck. You're more than happy to do this. Now, of course, the thing you have to be worried about 
if you're a Jasper, assuming you know what you're playing against, is Collective Company and what it can bring to the table. Because first of all, Collective Company, you don't even have to take two to cast. Right, it's just free. So and this yeah. gets really, I mean, this is a pretty scary spot. Well, I think Jasper's pretty happy with the position he's in. He's far ahead on the board. He's got a lot of burn in his hand. But you're right, Collective Company is scary. He could really get blown out on the attack. Stoke the Flames is a nice card to have in hand because that's another card that costs more than three mana, so don't have to worry about Eidolon when it comes to that. But, you know, Jasper is savvy enough, has played enough Pro Tours, plays enough Magic to know, okay, if you didn't do anything with five mana, your spells collect a company. It's just how, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen to me? And there could be some pretty bad things. Zergo going to get dashed. And that's so aggressive, dashing Zergo <laughs> when you have an Eidolon on the board. That is <laughs> trading two, two points for sure on your side for maybe two on the other side. Well, it's not not aggressive. <laughs> Here's yeah. the collective company. Top six. And it looks like he has Seeker Warden. Okay. That was just not the best collective company. And, and that situation, I, I feel like a lot of the time, if you're the red player there, that's just what you have to kind of hope for. Just hope yeah, it's not, hope I mean, it's not you, too bad. you hope it's not like Fleece Main Lion, Hidden Dragon Slayer. That would be horrible. Bermaz maybe shows up. Yeah, yeah. Bermaz, Death Mist. You just lose everything. And there can be some bad things. Could things. Ha yeah, it could have been way worse than this. I mean, as it is, he probably has to just trade away the board. Something like Warden in front of Abbott, Seeker in front of. Eidolon, maybe. I don't know. If he has another collective company, he can play it differently. Here's a lightning strike. Going to take care of Seeker before blocks. Jasper will take two again. Okay, so now Ryan has no good blocks. Yep. The prowess will happen on Abbott. So it's seven. We'll put Ryan down to five. That mana confluence damage starting to add up a little bit here. It looks like Warren's going to jump in front of something, however. Maybe not. Looks like he might just take it all. Going to five against a red deck, scary for obvious reasons. Yep, so that's going to be seven damage. Three from the Abacus of Prowess, two from the other creatures. Dash will bring Zergo back to the grip, and now we go back over to Sari. That's two mana con, third <laughs> mana confluence, yeah. Oh, the Boswell. <laughs> It's not a pain land. It's, it's worse. It, right now it is. Yeah, these things have, caught, have added up. Ryan does have enough mana to make a 3-3 and lifelink it, but you would take three in doing that, so he wouldn't actually gain any life points. Yeah, it doesn't get anywhere with that. Got to come across here, pump up the jam. So what this does is it forces, if Jasper's whole hand is car, are cards that cost two or less, or, th or three or less, Eidolon cards, then Jasper cannot cast anything and can't make a lethal attack here. However, I believe Jasper has Stoke the Flames. Well, Ryan's about to take a bunch of damage to play Collected Company, and that's fine because here comes Stoke the Flames to kill you. And Jasper Johnson Epstein yeah. is going to win game number one here over Ryan. Sorry, Mono Red Aggro up a game here over Green White Collected Company. So, not that it matters, but I don't think he's, I don't actually like Collected Companying there. Okay. Um, mainly because that attack is for four. You don't die to it, and Jasper can't play anything. The card, the only cards that Jasper could play would be a Stoke. Okay. And there's a chance that you play that company, say Jasper's hand is all uncastables. You play the company and you don't hit two creatures. Then you just killed yourself. You just killed yourself. Sure. Right. To the sideboard, we're going to go. Uh, we'll start with Sarian's Greenway Company deck. Let's see if he's got any red hate in there. Uh, not too much. I mean, you're a Greenway deck, so a lot of your... Your, a lot of your matchup here happens in the main deck. Uh, so we'll go through some of the cards he has. Things like Spirit of the Labyrinth, Revoke Existence, Hollowed Moonlight, Elspeth Sun's Champion. One card I do like, I do like, and this is because he can collect a company into it, is Aegis of the Gods. That would give him Hexproof. Would actually be an out that he could have in if Jasper tries to point a burn spell at him. Though to be fair in this matchup, the burn spells are usually pointed at Ryan's creatures. So there is not too much for him to board into. 
Other side of things here for Jasper, he's got two Goblin Heel Cutters, two Thunderbreak Regions, two Magma Sprays, a Molten Vortex, four copies of Roast, two Smash the Smithereens, a Chandra Power Master, and then an Outpost Siege. I imagine he'll try to kill Green White's creatures. Uh, cards like Roast and even Magma Spray or and Goblin Heel Cutter all are pretty good in the matchup. Uh, and Roast is made for this matchup. Yeah, this is exactly it kills everything. Be. Yeah, I mean, there's no Siege Rhinos to worry about, but it, that's, that's actually a good thing if you're the Mono Red player. Uh, as we get ready here for game number two, Ryan Sorry will be on the play. We'll very quickly talk about the Battle for Zendikar pre-release. We've been talking about the set so much. Might as well talk about the free release that's taking place at Star City Games, September 26th through the 27th. That's next weekend. The Open Series is on hiatus, but the pre-releases are not. So get ready to do Battle for the Battle for Zendikar playmat. you got narwhals and this giant, what is that, an octopus, a squid? I'm no animal well, scientist. It's probably a kraken. Mm, right. A kraken. A kraken. A kraken. He's, yeah. But Sophedrons are secretly carrots. You see he's riding one of those. It's a battle. That's what we're battling for. For the, for the Zenda carrot. StarCityGames.com slash pre for more information. Get this playmat there. Uh, you know, you're playing any events there, especially the main event, you're going to get this playmat. Now, as you guys know, with the promotion that we run with this, you can only get it at the Star City Game Center. So if you can't make it out there, any that are left over, head to the website Monday morning. There won't be very many left, and it's oftentimes a race to get to this. So StarCityGames.com slash pre-release for more information about the pre-release. And then if you can't make it out to the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia, head to StarCityGames.com Monday morning and get the Battle for Zendikar play mat as quickly as you possibly can as we get here ready here for game number two between Jasper and Ryan. Red versus Green White Company. You know, one thing that people have noted taking a look at the Battle for Zendikar, spoiler, we don't have a lightning strike. No, the lightning strike's going, rotating out for Mono Red. We don't have a great burn spell in Battle for Zendikar for the Red decks. So Red's losing a bunch of stuff, and it, it doesn't appear as though it's getting a ton of replacements. Well, it's losing some things. Okay, it's losing what we are. We lose lightning strike. We. Eidolon. We lose Eidolon. Stoke. And Stoke and Rabble Master. So, yeah, red could take a hit here. At the same time, I'm not sure if you're playing red that you wouldn't want to play a second color anyway, um, just because of how the mana is going to situate. I guess you are kind of free rolling on a bunch of extra mana. Right. So say I want to play a Tarka red. For example, if I like a Tarka's command as a card, you can play four of the new dual land. You can play four fetch lands in red green. Four wooded foothills. Four wooded, yeah. So. That's already eight green sources. It's pretty free. They're going to come into play untapped, too, because most of the, rest, the other cards are mountains. I think a lot of players, myself included, well, I don't want to say I was expecting a play to GOP reprint, but I was expecting like something like that to come back. Uh, um, maybe red doesn't need as much help as I'm thinking it does. Red's very good right now. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned how there are you know, a lot of rares in the, in the colors, like Zergo and Abbot of Carol Keep. And, you know, you're definitely losing some stuff. You get to keep Wild Slash, Fire Impulse if you want to go that way. You get, you get to keep Exquisite Firecraft, too. I mean, and remember, there are creatures on the bench that we aren't using right now. Lightning Berserker, for example, is still in the format. Red's not playing him right now, but you certainly could. Yeah, there are probably some two drops that I'm forgetting. And also, you know, we are losing Rebel Master, sure, but perhaps Chandra lines up a little bit better now. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we have Pile Driver. Maybe we can play more Goblins now. Yeah. Uh, there's also that, like, 2-1 Goblin that makes, like, a Goblin unblockable. Yeah, a subterranean scout. Yeah, you know, maybe you throw that in as a curve filler. Uh, there is, I mean, if you look at goblins, that certainly is a deck right now. You have goblin glory chaser, you have pile driver, you have subterranean scout. There's good things to sneak through. Still no heel cutter, though. Yeah. It looks like these players will take a mulligan, so not particularly happy with their opening hand. So I'll take a look at six cards here. And even taking a look, you know, a lot of the red cards that have come out for Battle for Zendikar, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's any home run no, red, for a red deck. The mythic spot that was printed in the set was given was a reprint of Dragon Master Outcast, yep. which we've seen before, and that card really was not a player its first time around. It definitely is popular in, some, in multiplayer formats, but it's typically too slow for 1v1. Yeah, asking for six or more lands, that's a, that's a pretty heavy commitment. We've seen cards like that be okay, you know, Scoot Mob. That one was right. asking for that five or more. That was fine. And that was also a format where you had Ranger of Aos to go get it. Yeah, you got to play a, a one of Scoot Mob a lot. Yeah. But people still weren't playing. Yeah, and you wouldn't play it four or anything. Yep. I don't know what to expect from it. I mean, you do mention that there are a lot of cards on the bench, and maybe Goblins is the way you can go, like Justin Cohen's giving a try today. And we'll have that deck tech for you guys at the end of this round. 
and he's not even incorporating the new cards, but maybe there aren't enough new cards to incorporate once we do get Battle for Zendikar two weeks from now. So who knows what red's going to look like? One thing you can't say, though, you know, a card like Abbott Akira O'Keefe, that card's no joke. That card's great. We've seen it last weekend, of being seeing some play in modern, some John players picking it up. Patrick Chapin playing a teamer pump spell deck. Yeah, the teamer prowess deck. That prowess deck, yeah, yeah. was a big player there. I know Chapin felt that Abbott was the best card in Magic Origins, and it has not disappointed. And I think we're in store for a lot more of that moving forward. Ooh, another card that people aren't playing right now, Irish Shaman. Right. Forgot about that one. Kind of Abbott light. Could see more of that. Both players look like they're happy with their hand. We're underway here in game number two. A forest is where Sari will start. Jasper with just a mountain. Yeah, you see in Jasper's hand, it looks like a pair of roasts. His hand was keepable, but low on pressure, which is a dangerous spot to be in this matchup. The one thing that he Jasper does not get to do here is he does not have a card that goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Collected Company. Players will trade resources a bunch, and Collected Company will be the two-for-one. Yeah, Jasper doesn't have any four-drop. I mean, he, I don't believe he's not playing very many copies of Chandra, for example. Mm -hmm. He has one in the sideboard. Searing Blood will take care of Hidden Dragon Slayer. There's a forest. Here's a Den Protector face-up. Surprised to see him play it face up instead of face down. I understand this is a matchup where you typically play Den Protector face up. However, um, based on how this game is going, face, trying to get extra value off it is not unreasonable. Of course, it depends on what the rest of Ryan's hand is, but I'm not thrilled about having a 2-1. Jasper has a lot of removal in hand. I think it's three copies of Roast and then a Magma Spray. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. There is no shortage of removal. He just needs some creatures now. There's <laughs> land number four. Here we see, once again, for Ryan, it's a lot of mana confluence. They're not free. They are not at all. There's a mountain. Yeah, Jasper, and that's happening in Mugan. You have to keep a speculative hand. Oh, what do we have here? I think we're God's willing on the... Den yeah, all right. Maybe a response here from Jasper. Yeah, gonna go with Magma Spray. <laughs> I think we have another God's Excuse Willing. Excuse me. All right. Just for the Robins, the second one's foil. That that's that's the worst part. Well, two burn spells countered. Did not expect to see that. At least Jasper got life points for them. They were cast off mana confluences. Yeah, this is a, a, a little win. It's a minor thing, but it's a win nonetheless. It's a very big fight to be fought over a two-one. So how Sari wants to scry. Looks like cards are just going towards the bottom. And Sari left with one card in hand. Here comes Den Protector for two. Johnson Epstein down to 16. Jasper, maybe will just kill spell Ryan's board away. I don't. He'd have to win from that point, which is harder. He finally has a creature now, though. Monastery Swift Spear was the draw. Yep. Here's Roast. There you go. <laughs> says, please die. So no, he says, please, <laughs> just let me kill it. Wrong, Jeroka's command. OK, just kidding, Jeroka's command. That's <laughs> uh, uh, how about another Roast? Got him. There we go. Got him. Got there. Get in for three. So after four kill spells, the 2-1 was, was felled. Three Roasts and a Magma Spray to take down now here's the danger. Yeah, Talked this, about this. this is Talked horrible. about this. This is such bad news. Trade, 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 collected company. You have to assume it's going to hit something irrelevant. Oh, yeah. He's got uh, <laughs> Nissa Death Mist Raptor. Those are hits. Yeah. Well, there's a basic forest. And the bad thing here for Jasper is that he's used three roasts already. So this is going to be hard to win Gosh, now. No removal again. Yeah. <laughs> Death and Raptor are going to jump in front of Monastery Swift Spear. This is the difficulty. When we talked, I was saying earlier about Collected Company. Jasper doesn't have a card that does what that just did. Yep. You know, he's great at trading. He's got good threats. But if you get to the, point, to, the, to the point in the game where Ryan starts casting that, it's just tough. Had Jasper had creatures on the battlefield when this sort of stuff happened, he might be OK. But, you know, he started off slow. He had a lot of removal. Finally found a creature on Swift Spear, which got a little bit of damage. But now he's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, second death mess for Ryan. Two mountains for Jasper. Should be game three. Probably relatively soon. 
barring a ravaging blaze. No, that wouldn't even be enough. I don't know. <laughs> Big X spell. <laughs> hey, he spell mastered, so it would deal some damage. But I don't think eight. Here come the beatdowns. Yeah, we're going to get ready for a third one here. I don't think there's any coming back here for Jasper. The follow-up is a morph, either Den Protector or Hidden Dragon Slayer. Jasper with a lightning strike and a mountain in hand. Sorry, we'll check opponent, Check opponent's life total. Eight. It's not three. Yep. Here come the beatdowns. Morph with Den Protector. And Ryan Sorry is going to win game number two here over Jasper Johnson Epstein. One to one is the score. As Green White Company and Mono Red Aggro get ready here for game number three. That's the power of Collective Company in the matchup. Yeah. It's, it's this stabilizer that. It, it's the one card that's not a one for one here. Post board, you see with all those roasts, Jasper is able to reduce the game to one to ones a lot. So because he has removal and Ryan doesn't, when he gets ahead on the board, he's, he can hold on to it more. Game does feel closer post board, but. Collected Company will still do it for Ryan. Well, fortunately for Jasper and his red deck, he'll be on the play for game three, which is where he wants to be against the green-white deck. So we'll see if he's able to capitalize on that opportunity. We'll very quickly talk about Next Level Magic along with Next Level Deck Building. It's the Next Level Library by Patrick Chapin, the innovator, of course. Books for all skill levels, paperback and ebook. They're both available now at starcitygames.com slash next level. So if you're looking to improve your deck building, your ability to play Magic, and just overall understand Magic, one or both of these books is definitely what we recommend starcitygames.com slash next level for more information about those fantastic books from the Hall of Famer, Patrick Chapin. As we get ready here for game on numero three. See, so yeah, numero and then three. I mix yeah. it up. I'm capable of anything. It's good. It appeals to different crowds. See, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. Now, there is a new red card that might see play, depending on how high up the curve you want to go. All right, all right, what do we got? So there's a column Firebird. Which All is, right. uh, we've had so many Phoenixes over the course of Magic. I right. think Chandra's Phoenix is probably the best of the bunch. Right now we have Ash Cloud and Flame Wake. So here's the problem, right? Is, is, is this card better than Ash Cloud or Flame Wake? It's 3 3 Flying Haste, so I'm interested. That's not bad for four. Has to attack, that's fine. Red decks do that anyway. Landfall is not bad. You could pay that. The card's interesting. Um, I don't think it will push the red deck one way or the other. I think with the card you want to compare it to is, would you rather play this than Thunderbreak Regent? Yeah, and that, I, I think that's the problem, right? Like, I think I, will, I think I want Thunderbreak Regent every time, or at least a high percentage of the time. Yeah, I mean, it, Thunderbreak Regent represents kind of a going big plan. You board it in against removal. This might be better. I think there are, it's I, close. I think there can be matchups where this is better. It feels like, you know, if you compare one next to the other, you know, Thunderbreak Regent's a 4-4, four, four, this is a 3-3, three, three, so Regent is better just on numbers yeah, alone. This does damage quicker, though. Yeah, that's the thing. This does damage quicker. Maybe when you're going longer against, like, a Dig Through Time deck, this is realistic to bring back, where Thunderbreak Regent just dies and dealt them what might be three points of irrelevant damage. Yeah, so both of them deal three. Yeah, I mean, if they both only get to deal three, then I think this is better. It can come back. Thunderbreak can't. Um, remember that Bio Blight and Lightning Strike are both rotating out, so 3 3 might be a safer number than it is right now. Like right now, I look at this and I say, boy, that guy kind of dies to a lot of removal. I'm not sure I feel about that. Um, this card's interesting, and mm, it's very possibly just good. What's, in um, what's interesting is like the three damage removal spells that are coming back, or that are still available because Bio Blight and Lightning Strike are gone. It's like only Draconic War? Yeah, so, so right, it's only Draconic War still deals three. This still gets ultimate priced, but so does Thunder Break, so that's fine. I, I think ultimate price is on its way out. With Devoid and the, all the multi yeah, cards. It, you may not be able to play that. I don't know if you can actually play ultimate price in, in this new format. It seems really, really hard to do. It is analyzing a card like this, when you put it side by side with Thunderbreak Region, it seems like it's worse, but that's, that's, the context is everything, right? Uh, yeah, and I'm not even convinced it matches up that poorly to Thunderbreak. Sure. This is, uh, this is a Mythic. This is one of the cards right. that they use in a Mythic spot, that and Dragon Master Outcast. Not to mention, I mean, so yeah, if you're just looking at mono red decks, it's close. I don't think, th if it is better than Thunderbreak, it's not by enough that I, I think it changes things. Remember, these mono red decks board into Thunderbreak sometimes. It's not a main deckable card. I do think, I, I prefer this to Ash Cloud Phoenix, for what it's worth. I think this okay. is a better card. Okay, fair enough. I, I think it's always interesting how we kind of, as a community, evaluate haste threats in red. Like, I remember when Hellrider got released and no one really said anything. Oh man, that guy was sweet. And then we kind of found out that like, oh, this thing's insane. Yeah and this thing needs to die immediately, or you die immediately. 
Monastery Swiss were going to come across here to start things off for Jasper. All right, so now if we Jasper's looking at a handful of roasts and magma sprays like he was game one, the tone is, or game two rather, the tone's going to be completely different because yep. of this Monastery Swift spear he has. That's exactly where he wants to be. I think he's got another Swift spear in hand too. Well, when they have multiple Swift spears on the play, it's kind of that goblin guide factor of those hands are very hard to beat from just about anyone. Yep, there's the other Swift spear coming across here for two. It's two right now. It's going to be a lot more than two later. All right, it's not a question. Okay, does Ryan have a blocker? The answer is yes. That's one creature dead. And good, and a good blocker at that. Jasper had a magma spray at the ready. Does he have a roast, a lightning strike? Yeah, he's got a strike. I've played games like this with the red deck before, where you have two Swiss spears and just a handful of removal, and you just point and click and grow your creatures each no, time. No third land. Got an Abbot. He's got some losers here. Abbot, Stoke, things that don't do anything. Their seeker of the way. No, we did see God's Willing last yeah, game. Yeah, and that's really important right now, too. Important, you know, Jasper will get not get blown out by it. He can play his removal pre-combat, see if it if it sticks. And if it does, you know, just don't attack into the lifelinker. And then it feels like a waste of turn, though. Shuffles Magma Spray to the front there. He also has Abbot of Carol Keep. You want to get super greedy? Try to add it into a mountain? I think he's had by enough that I don't want to do yeah. that. But I would actually be okay trading a turn and a magma spray for that God's Willing if Jasper, if Ryan has it. And there's also the situation that Ryan doesn't have it, in which case that plays great. This is close. It's, not, it's close. It's, it's not an easy decision. He's got a third swift spear. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could play third swift spear. And, mag and Magma Spray. A lot of upside if you're right about this with the Swiss. If you play third Swiss Spear, spray, kill this creature, get him for six. I feel like it's a hard game to lose then. Yeah. Play Zergo. All right. Remember, he does have Stoke the Flames in hand. Very true. Hmm, I wonder if he wants to kill now in response to this fetch line activation. Yeah. I like, I like killing in response to the fetch a lot. Let's get around that God's Willing yep. you know, lifelink. Jasper paid a pretty big price there for that. And there's some, some greed on Ryan's part about fetching end step there. That's, we're not playing modern. You're not getting temple gardens. It may just be best to go with the... So isn't it how you pace fetches in legacy versus modern? In modern, you always crack a end step. Uh, in legacy, you crack a fetch when you're about to use it. Or you actually try to not crack them. And I, I think he wanted to play that more like a legacy fetch land there. There's a forest. Is this the deep sigh pass? <laughs> I have I have nothing I to do. I don't have any. Ah, oh, no spells again. Pass. I don't, it looks like don't he has collected company. <laughs> All right, he's gonna go with the morph. Either dead protector or hidden dragon slayer. Jasper, we're gonna very quickly draw. I don't know if Jasper cares what the morph is. Well, he's got three monastery swift spears. Yeah, and he's got wild slash two now. So this is going to be 3, 6, 9, 10, that's an attack for an 11. 3 sisters is, is so good. Yeah. Sorry, he's down to 1. And that is going to do it. Jasper Johnson Epstein is going to win this match here over Ryan. Sorry, two games to one. Mono Red Aggro takes care of Green White Company. And for Jasper, a, a man who loves red magic cards, he's 5-0 and here in Milwaukee. Yeah, great start for Jasper. And no surprise to see him playing Mono Red here this weekend at all. Again, as we mentioned, he just top eight at Grand Prix Oklahoma City with Burn. Yep. Got, got knocked out by eventual champion Zach Elsick.